to go ahead and view it at a different time so you can go and see what it is. Because because I'm kind of getting excited because what I'm seeing is a lot of things are really starting to relate and they're starting to come full circle. And I know a lot of you aren't seeing it, but I know it's going to hit you eventually. You're like, wow, we're doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. And you're going to see how it's all starting to come together. So here what I have is now I have an X plus two, which is going to tell me I'm going to be shifting my graph left, right? Because it's inside of my function. So you guys can look at the graph and say, all right, if, I'm gonna have, if my x-intercept is at 1 comma 0, now it's going to be shifting left 2, right? So my graph now is really going to look something like this. We're all just going to make this the dotted paragraph, right? So how can I go ahead and do this without actually knowing? Now, that's pretty simple, right? But let's go and take a look at how can I algebraically show my work so that Ms. McLogan can see exactly I know what I'm doing. So if we say my domain is 0 to infinity, what we're saying is all x values are greater than 0, right? Well, that's for the function of log, you know, base 10 of x. Well, what we're going to do is now, to, to kind of just show exactly what your domain is, what you can say is take what's inside of your function and set that greater than 0. So say x plus 2 is greater than 0. Then solve for x. And if you guys remember, if you guys remember, remember doing the domain for a radical? Wouldn't that be a negative 2? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys remember doing the radical? Remember when we did domain? I said set the, what's inside of the, under the radical, set that greater than zero. Yeah. You guys remember that? Greater than or equal to zero? This is kind of the same thing. You're going to take what's inside of your function and set that greater than, um, greater than zero because that's your do domain. Your domain is all x values greater than zero. So if you're changing any, anything inside of your function, set that equal to zero or I'm sorry, greater than zero. The same thing, so this is for your domain. Same thing for your uh, vertical asymptote. Your vertical asymptote on this is x equals zero. Well, that was for your parent graph up there. So if you want to find out what is my new x, uh, as, or what is my new vertical asymptote going to be, do x plus two equals zero. So now x equals a negative two. Which, you guys can see, that's 1, that's 2, really kind of makes sense because what am I only doing with my graph? I'm just shifting it to the left 2, right? So this is an algebraic way to show that your domain is now going to be from negative 2 to infinity. And your vertical asymptote is when x equals negative 2. Yes? If you were uh, subtracting then it'd be a positive two. Because remember, you'd be shifting it to the right. Still to infinity? Huh? Still to infinity? Huh? Still to yeah, infinity. still to infinity. Yep, your graph is still going to be going well, to what infinity. What if it was negative one? Well, then what would happen is if you had a negative, well, if you had that negative inside of there, then you have to divide, right? Divide by negative one, and you have to flip the inequality sign. How would you write that? Like, would it it'd be the same with this. You'd have like a negative this. And then you'd have to divide. Do you see that? Is that. No? What are you talking about? Like, how would you write the domain? Would it be like a negative, or negative 2 to negative infinity? Mm -hmm. Or would it be like a negative 2 to negative infinity? Or if it was flipped, that positive 2 to negative infinity? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Right. If it was flipped, that means I'm going to have a negative x, right? Mm -hmm. I told you, just take whatever's inside of your function. So if that was a negative x, OK? Then I would have negative x plus 2 is greater than 0. Does that make sense? So just take whatever's inside of there. And if, if Chase, you have a 3x, if this was a 3 inside of there, then it would be 3x plus 2 is greater than 0. Just take what's inside of your function, or what is your function, and set it greater than 0. How would you write it, though? OK, well, I have this, right? Then you have to solve for x. So here, I would subtract 2. I get negative x is greater than 0. What am I dividing? Negative 2. I divide by negative 1. x is now less than 2. 
right? So my domain, okay, would be from negative infinity, because it's all values less than, can you guys please be quiet? Less than two, all the way up to two. So that would be my domain. Okay, but what if it was x minus two, like I said prior? Without the negative x. So it'd be x is greater than 2. The sign would be the same. Huh? Why would the sign be the same? No, you would only flip the signs. You only flip the sign, yeah, when you multiply or divide by the So how would you write that? So it says all values greater than 2. So your domain is from 2 to infinity. So, um, we're not dealing with an x. So going back from this problem, so if it was negative infinity, Jessica, yeah. if you have negative, you just go from it. It says x is greater than all values greater than negative 2, so it's negative 2. If I said x is greater than 2, you just go from 2 to infinity, right? Because look at the graph. Just look at what this graph is doing. It's still going to infinity. So you just pick the value that it's going to and then go to infinity. Well, I just wanted to know, like, what if it was going to negative infinity? How do you write it? Well, if it was going to negative infinity, you'd see, remember, you'd, and this whole graph would be flipped over, right? And you see that. Well, how would you graph it from there and start at negative infinity? What would start at negative infinity? Like, the, the, the domain, I think, um, is negative infinity. How would you graph it? Like well, if the graph was from negative, if the graph was from negative infinity to 2, this whole graph would be flipped over, right? And so what I really have is that I've now, um, my, let's say my asymptote, that one was at negative 2. So now my graph will look something like this because it'd be reflecting. All right? I don't want to get too off track, guys, because I have no problem answering questions. I'll answer them. I just want to finish up this video to finish up the problem, and then I'll answer more of your questions after that. Okay. Um, so yeah. So now the last thing I need to do, and that's not a problem, guys. I have no problem answering your questions and trying to get the most out of it. I just don't want to get too sidetracked. I want to at least finish up the problem. The last thing we need to do is find the y-intercept, or I'm sorry, the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is when y equals 0. So I say 0 equals log base 3 of x plus 2. So transfer this to exponential form, 3, 0 equals x plus 2. 3 raised to 0 is 1 equals x plus 2. Subtract 2, x equals a negative 1. And you guys can see when we just did that, that that's where it crosses, x equals negative 1. What? <laughs> like, you I did thought that to find the x-intercept. No, I thought you had to subtract the 2 and then get negative 2 equals log 3x and then negative 1. Yeah, negative 2 equals negative 1. You gotta transfer it to exponential, you gotta transfer it to exponential form first. Before you can, you can't, we haven't learned anything to get rid of that log. To get rid of the log, you got to transfer the exponential form. Oh, I'm just Why did you move the 3 to the other side? You can end the 0. I didn't move the 3 to the other side. I transferred this to exponential form. 3 raised to the 0 part equals x plus 2. That is what we did, remember, in our warm-up. Transferred this to this. That's what we practiced today, in the morning, right when we started class. That's all we did.